cookie season is upon us, well almost, and this is a cookie recipe everybody needs to know. If you love fudge brownies, if you love cookies, if you love Ben, you'll absolutely adore these. These are fudgy, delicious, and they have that iconic crackly top. We all know it's not a brownie without the crackles. You want to start by melting the chocolate and butter. You want to use the best quality chocolate you can find. It is, after all, the star of this recipe. Do not use anything less than a 70% bar. It's going to be intense and rich, and we're going to compensate that darkness with sugar and a good amount of it too. You cannot cut the sugar in this recipe. I always get asked this question, can you cut the sugar or substitute the sugar? You can in cake, you can in cookies, you can't in brownies. And I know these are cookies, but let's be honest here, okay? These are closer to brownies than cookies. The sugar is what's going to give the brownies, or in this case, the brownie cookies, that shiny crackly top that we all know is a must for brownies. Without the crinkles, you're just making cake, honey, okay? You're not making brownies. You want to whip the sugar and egg well, use an electric mixture, and you want to whip this mixture until it becomes this pale mayonnaise-like color, kind of like my hoodie. At this point, you can add the melted chocolate and butter, which should have slightly cooled. We're going to finish folding everything by hand using a spatula. Measurements and the full written recipe will be in the description box and on my website, emmafontanella.com. And if you're new to my channel, hello there. Welcome. Make sure to subscribe and click that bell. I post new videos every week. I've added the sifted flour, baking powder, and salt. The salt is going to balance out that chocolate and sweetness. Now, what I love about these cookies, besides being, of course, absolutely amazing, the batter does not need refrigeration. You're probably thinking, well, how am I going to form cookies with such a loose dough, okay? You're going to cover the dough with plastic wrap and set it to the side on your counter while you preheat the oven, okay? By the time the oven has preheated, we're ready to make some cookies. In the meantime, let's play Best Fiends. You know Best Fiends, we go way back, and I wanna thank them for sponsoring today's video. I've been playing this game for years. I remember bragging about my level. I was so proud of it. You guys just crushed me and shut me up with your high levels. If you've never played this game, you have to try it. Essentially, it's a puzzle adventure game where you solve thousands of fun puzzles and collect these cute characters called beans to defeat slugs by matching same colored objects. It's really fun. I could play this game for hours. I love puzzle games and this one really makes you think, have fun, and relax at the same time. I play this in the evenings. I get off social media, make myself a nice cup of tea, and just wind down on the couch and play a few levels. My friends and family love this game. We compete against each other, but after hearing your levels, I'm quite embarrassed, okay? I thought I was so good at this game, but apparently not because you guys are crushing me. L let me know what level you're at right now. I'm on level 222 as you can see. For all of you who've yet to play this game, I'll leave a link in the description box below. Definitely try it out. Let me know what you think. If you love these kind of puzzle games, I'm telling you this one is the best. Download the game for free using my link to get $5 worth of gold and energy for free if you beat level 5. And remember, it's like friends but without the R. So best fiends. Okay, thank you again for sponsoring today's video. Once your oven has preheated, your batter will still be running. <laughs> Look at that. It will hold its shape a tad better though. You're going to pop your batter into a piping bag. This is a trick we use in professional kitchens. It's faster, easier. Nobody's got time for a cookie scoop, which by the way, always gets lost. It's kind of like the equivalent to bobby pins for hair. For some reason, it gets lost and pops up randomly when you don't need it. I've said this before, cut the smallest opening possible. That way you have more control over the piping bag. You want to leave enough space between each cookie because these will spread out. With this recipe, you should be able to get around eight large cookies or about two to three bowls of tiny cookies. I really wanted to include this option in the video because with the holidays coming up, I thought this could be such a cute gift to give to friends and family. Now, because we're making these freehand without a cookie scoop, I'll leave the diameter you want to aim for in the description box. By no means do you have to be super precise, but roughly you do want to aim for that size for baking time purposes. The tiny cookies will take only around four to five minutes to cook, and the bigger cookies will take eight minutes to cook in a preheated oven at 160 degrees Celsius or 320 Fahrenheit with the fan on. The fan will give the cookies a nice push and allow these to shatter. Now, when you take the bigger 
cookies out of the oven, they will look kind of undone. Do not be tempted to bake these longer. Remember, we're making brownie cookies here, okay? So the inside is gonna be, in fact, a gooey brownie texture. Allow these to sit for about 10 minutes. If you pick these up now, they will just fall apart. So let these cool and then gently remove them from the parchment paper. Now the big cookies are my absolute favorite. They're soft with a slight crisp around the edges and these will melt in your mouth. The mini ones are just as fabulous. These are great to pop in a bowl with some milk and enjoy with a spoon. I think these would make such a cute gift during the holidays. If you've never made brownie cookies, give these a go. You will fall in love with these.